Can I go? <gasps> I got it. Week three, 101. Uh, more learning, more figuring out what's what in the wine industry. Today we're going to start talking about sparkling wine, um, which is something that, uh, okay, again, we've been talking about my stereotypes of what I've come into drinking mm -hmm. wine thinking. Yep. Uh, sparkling wine mm -hmm. is, again, more of the lady side of the drink, uh, something that you're okay. doing maybe if you're having a couple of mimosas in the morning, um, which yep. I say... I say lady's side of the drink. I love a mimosa. Who doesn't so like love I, a mimosa? I think I'm just basing this off, uh, you know, um, pop culture and whatnot. That's <laughs> sort of where it comes out of, you know. Like you go to the. You it is a little bit odd, though. Like, on, on one hand, like, you would associate um, sparkling wine with being more feminine, but beer, which is just sparkling malt beverage, pretty much <laughs> arbitrarily, technically the same thing uh, as being a male beverage. It's, it's a little bit, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. They're just, they're just, it's just wine with bubbles in it. Absolutely right. Um, the, th the things that I want to ask you guys about are what's up with champagne. Yep. Um, pet nap. That's yep. something yep. that I've recently come across. Uh, yep. And in general, what makes a spark, like what separates a spark, like what is the difference between me putting some white wine in a soda stream and having a sparkling wine? They're sort of where we need to get up. Like, how does the bubbles get into it? But anyway, let's start out with champagne. So obviously, yep. uh, what you've probably heard before when you've ordered, you've gone, hey, can I get a glass of champagne? And someone said to you, well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's very I've, I've had the inverse happen. Oh. I, I, I was working in a hotel and someone was like, hey, can we just get two glasses? Of, oh, we can just get a bottle of champagne. I'll just put out the house bottle of sparkling wine. And they're like, no, 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 we mean fucking champagne. And then it's like, all right, yes, Louis Roderoff, you, sir, here you go. Oh, that's <laughs> so wonderful for them. So what we're talking about here is essentially, from what I understand, an extension of Appalachian. Yes. yes. Cool. Well done. He's well learning. Done. Uh, yeah, so, so champagne's champagne. a place. Champagne's, champagne's a place. Champagne's a place, not a drink. It well, is it's both. It's both. Yeah, champagne. Yeah. Like champagne is a place in a drink, yeah. Yeah, so basically to have champagne, it has to be sparkling wine from a particular place. It has to be made from a core group of grape varieties, um, mostly Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, Pinot Blanc, and a few others. Uh, yeah, there, on Donk is another grape variety yeah, that's uh, getting I believe. That's a funny one. Yeah, there, there is there is a bunch of there's a bunch of very niche grape varieties that are allowed in it, but for, on the whole, it's largely the the, the big three: Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier. So, in the sense that it's both a place and a drink, could mm -hmm. you say that it's quite comparable to Bundaberg? No, oh, Bundaberg rum though. That's yeah, a place. It's a drink. That's yeah. that's sugar cane champagne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's a good one. So, like no, cha champagne, you wouldn't say it was like champagne sparkling wine, as like Bundaberg is a brand and a place, yep. not a drink in a place. Champagne, the the whole idea of drinking champagne, you wouldn't say I'm drinking Bundaberg. You're drinking Bundaberg rum. So it's a little bit it's a little bit distinct from that because there there lacks a cultural uh, connection to land. Bundaberg rum could largely be arguably made anywhere. You could make Bundaberg rum in WA if you wanted to. You could make Bundaberg rum on the moon if you wanted to because, because it's Bundaberg a recipe, a not a not so much a recipe, but it's a brand. Okay. Um, I'm sure I'm sure they have a particular way of making it that is distinct to them. That's their own thing, but it's not distinct to a place. Whereas there is a flavour that is closely associated with the actual lines of, of latitude and longitude that are champagne and the grape varieties and the cultural loading that comes with how to grow those things that has been stretching for, you know, cent uh, centuries largely. Okay. Um, that, that arise to what champagne is. Why is champagne the uh, most famous of the sparkling wines? Was it the, was it the first? Like champagne being no. you know, the region that we're talking about? Like why? Pernod was probably the first. Technically, yeah. Pernod yeah. So why is champagne such a uh, okay. spoke? Like why is it such a term that we use as a bit of a cover yeah. for sparkling wine if we're not you know being really specific about yeah. marketing? Marketing. Specifically, but that's not to detract on the quality that that is champagne. Like yeah, quite often, it's marketing amazing. is like, oh, it's yeah. just marketing, but it's not really quality. That's that's not that's totally not true in this instance. Champagne has been around for a while, and in fact, the first people that were employed to uh, sort of uncover what was going on when champagne was being made was that they were actually employed to get rid of the bubbles. 
Right. Yeah, the bubbles were a problem. It was causing exploding glass. And so uh, the French, who weren't no like n weren't sort of known for their very good glass making techniques, the British were. There's a very close relationship between the Champenoise, the people of Champagne, and the British, because the British actually had the glass that could handle the pressure. So they would often get the glass from from the UK, come across to Champagne, and they'll put the the wines in uh, in stasis in bottle. Eventually, they'll become sparkling, which was technically method ancestral or pet nat, as we know sort of today. Um, so the idea of champagne being what it is today is, is a derivation of pet natal method and ancestral, which is the more sort of correct term for it. Um, but uh, no, the marketing the marketing blew it up. The marketing made it popular, okay. um, but not not because it was low quality. Uh, just no, no, no. Yeah. Marketing marketing is a bit of a dirty word these days in the sense it's yeah. just like oh that's just good branding or whatever. Good branding, quite like Nike's got good branding. Nike makes some nice clothes as well. Like you know, I like yeah. their shoes. Um, so that's, we've talked about champagne there. Pet nat. Can you talk to me about, pe because for me, I think of, again, this is just my uh, approach to it. I think of pet nat as sort of like the dirty hippie of winemaking. Is that <laughs> somewhat accurate? Because it just seems like, oh, it's just natural, man. The bubbles are in there. We don't really know how they got in there, but they're there now. Like, what's the deal with it? Well, uh, like, that's kind of the the modern way of looking at it, I guess. Um, that's the modern way? <laughs> well, no, it's the oldest way of making sparkling wine. It's, like, it's, the it's, it's, the oldest, it's the oldest way of making wine that we know of, because before anything that we know of happened, like, to go into bottle, during fermentation, bottle, bubbles occurred and people drunk it while it was fermenting. That's why it's sparkling. It's the idea of Pet Nat in its truest form is that you're bottling a wine mid-fermentation and the the carbonation within it is naturally occurring rather than added. With with champagne, you're adding sugar and yeast and dosage to make it bubbly. Uh, uh, Prosecco is basically doing that format in a larger scale. Pet Nat is literally, in its truest sense, it's not necessarily how it's done 100% of the time, is you capture the wine mid-ferment, put it in bottle, and then you open it up later and it's still sparkling. I've heard the phrases um, primary or secondary or mm -hmm. like, dub like double fermented. Yep. What's, what's that about? Yep. Well, primary ferment uh, is the initial ferment of turning sugar into alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's also the secondary ferment, which we know as uh, malolactic fermentation, which is transferring uh, uh, lactic, mal mal lactic, mal mal malic acid into lactic, lactic acid. acid. Yeah. 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 So, which is which is a, a bacterial thing in the in the realms of sparkling, quite often a secondary ferment, which is a little bit distinct from like secondary fermentation or uh, the second ferment. It's it is confusing in this respect between still wines and sparkling wines. Sparkling wines would typically refer to a like a la champagne, um, fermenting a base wine to dryness, then either maturing the base wine for a while or doing a bit of blending with it, then putting it into bottle adding some sugar, adding some yeast, and conducting another another fermentation inside the bottle with it mm -hmm. capped so all the uh, resultant carbon dioxide gets remained in stasis inside that bottle, and that's where we get the sparkling from. It actually gets uh, absorbed into the wine in effect. Um, that, that would be deemed the secondary ferment. Pet nat, petillant naturel, which is where the name comes from, nat natural petillance, um, doesn't actually undergo technically a secondary fermentation. True pet nat... Uh, will actually be bottled, as Noel was, was saying, mid-ferment, and it will just simply continue that same fermentation, but now in a closed atmosphere. When you think about the rise and rise of natural wine and the obsession of a natural wine for many people, this is sort of the ultimate one because you carbon dioxide is um, uh, naturally protects wine from oxidation, okay? Yep. Uh, because you're bottling uh, during basically that primary fermentation you have no opportunity to be able to add sulfur to it which means that naturally pet nats are going to end up being higher in co2 more resistant to uh so2 so um, uh, sulfur dioxide um and uh are going to be more cleaner expressions of i think what people are searching for when they're searching for a no additives wine um, so it is the penultimate expression of i think that movement and i think that's why it's become popularized of late okay um, so also, it's cheaper than champagne for the most part. It is much cheaper than champagne. <laughs> <laughs> much cheaper than, much champagne. Cheaper than champagne. So essentially, uh, look uh, again, coming at this from the outside perspective, where I don't know anything about winemaking, um, I'd always assumed that, like I said in the intro, the idea of just sort of like soda streaming uh, white wine was essentially the process. Like I, that's I, a legitimate method. Yeah, to make sparkling wine. That is, you know that. So 
No, I didn't. What yeah. What sort of sparkling wine are you making with that? So uh, I think no discussion of sparkling should be without a specific discussion about Prosecco, um, which, which Noah was alluding to before, um, uh, which is sort of a derivation. It's a meeting of the minds, and it's a really good segue into what you're talking about, which is called carbonation. So yeah. Prosecco or Charmat method is essentially doing this secondary ferment. So getting a dry base wine, shoving it in instead of a bottle, we're going to shove it in a massive tank. We're going to hit it with more sugar, more yeast, and that's going to cause another fermentation. We bottle wines from that under under counter pressure. So that is Charmat method. That's yeah. Prosecco method. Prior knowledge to that is that when, with champagne, the fermentation is done within bottle with a, additional uh, sugar and yeast. Yeah. In many different forms. And then it's the, the secondary fermentation, not the malolactic fermentation. The carbonation fermentation is happened happens in bottle rather than in a big tank, which is what yeah. happens in, in Prosecco. Prosecco. Also, Prosecco is made from a different grape variety called Glera. So distinct from that. So it is, but but there is a large amount of Prosecco <coughs> that's that's consumed. Carver is actually made like champagne, secondary fermentation in bottle, again, with different grape varieties. Um, then you've got carbonation, which is, think of it a little bit like Prosecco, where you've got a massive tank full of dry wine, but instead of doing that secondary fermentation, you're literally soda streaming pumping co2 and pumping co2 into that tank uh chilling it down so it goes into solution and then bottling wine from that under under what we call a counter pressure filler would that wine generally be corked not capped uh it could be either or it, it could be either or okay uh more often corked than capped in in the wine world the whole idea of putting things under crown seal is very much a movement pro uh a natural wine, the natural wine, wine movement yeah. has really pushed that. Um, so you very rarely find uh, any wine under crown seal. Okay. Um, Unfortunately. I, I, yeah, it should, more should be. More should It makes sense for it because quite often uh, wine corks are actually composite corks, which are four corks glued together, which is four times the amount that you have, chance that you have of being cork tainted, which is just silly. And it's more expensive. Yeah, and it's more expensive. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So there, there are pros and cons. Cool. Anyway, we digress. So the few that we've spoken about, we've got your sort of champagne, you've got your Prosecco, you've got your Pet Nat. Mm -hmm. As we've done with the reds and whites, uh, what recommendations do you have? If I'm in a bottle shop and I want to try some of these things, what should I be looking for? Not even Great. specific ones, but like, what should I be looking for? How much is the least, what's the cheapest bottle of champagne I can buy? Probably well, you can get one. Chandon. Yeah, more Chandon, Mum. 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 Uh, is, very is that like 60, 70 bucks a bottle? Yeah. 20 to 30 you can get cheaper believe, believe it or not uh, like Australia has some of the the most sort of best value champagne we're actually one of the highest consumers of champagne per capita globally yeah. mm. uh, <coughs> which is the reason why we end up having so much we also have grey imports that drive that price down yeah. in the states it ends up being a little bit more expensive but yeah. the big ones out of Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy the parent company LVMH uh, Sorry. Moet Chandon and Sorry. Louis Vuitton Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy is a LVMH is a, is the parent company that owns Moet and Chandon and but uh, like the Verve Clico, not the bougie yes, designer no, brand. Same Louis one. Vuitton. Same one. They also really? own they also own that company as well. Yeah, that. Absolutely. Um, but as uh, champagne goes, if you want to like branch out to something a little bit more independent, Le Mandier Bernier is is one that offers incredible value for money. Uh, in the uh, that being said, it's still going to cost you a hundred bucks. Still going to cost you hundred bucks. About hundred bucks is probably what you're going to end up spending for but really like that's a decent shot uh, champagne. Uh, I'd say um, to drop it probably another thirty dollars. Go to Paul Roger. Paul Roger. Paul Roger, Paul Roger is probably yeah. like champagne's one of those ones. Just spend a, a, a bit of money and get something pretty good. Uh, otherwise, you can go. You can shop domestic. Yep. Um, depending yep. on where you are, and you can buy wines made in the same style at yep. a lower no, price point. Yeah, so that's yeah. just sparkling white. Yeah, so it's not champagne. It's made in the shampoo, uh, champagne style, but it's mm. it's sparkling uh, sparkling wine. Cool. Yeah. Uh, in terms of some pet nats, what if I'm going to go buy a pet nat? What should I be looking for in a good pet nat? Unico Zello Sea Farm. <laughs> um, well, we no, did get a really awesome one here. Um, uh, great, which is the Delinquente uh, Weeping Juan uh, Pet Nat Rosé. It is very interesting. It's, it's delicious. Like, fantastic. Yeah, it is. Uh, it'll cost you twenty. Would, yeah, not as thick. No, honestly, not as thick as some. I've seen yeah. probably like it, that's up there. But there, it's not there are wines that come out with literal tartrate like rings. Yeah, so it's fine. Um, like that, that'll cost you twenty five bucks. That's the good thing about Pet Nat. You don't really spend more than forty dollars on anything unless it's imported. Um, there's a whole whole raft of great ones. Uh, Love your letter. Um, uh, the other right. Like if it, this is in Australia, um, every country is going to have their different expression of it. Um, I don't. 
unfortunately, I don't know too many great American ones or French ones off the top of my head, uh, because they're always going to vary in price point. But here, uh, Don Quentin is a great way to start. Okay, and <clears throat> Prosecco. What's up with Prosecco? It's a plethora, really. Uh, you, can get, you can get local and internationally produced. You can, you can. And that's actually really contentious at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, the King Valley in Australia is known for, you know, marvellous Prosecco production, but it is sort of contentious at the moment regarding the naming of it. Um, inside the area of Prosecco, there is uh, sub-regions, uh, particularly Val de is one that I've sort of identified as being <coughs> sort of, you know, incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, and they, they are heightening the quality of it. Um, outside of, and this isn't Prosecco, but it is close by Francia Corta, um, where you've got the likes of uh, Bella Vista and Cardel Bosco. That's more method champenoise. That's more like champagne-esque. Mm-hmm. That's definitely not Prosecco. Um, but that's where you start to see sort of like the the mer- emergence of these these sort of new world sparkling wines that are really giving champagne a run for their money. Over. Right. Well, look, we've only really covered a few different things today. I also had, we'll do it another time, but talking about uh, sparkling black and sparkling red wine and things like that. <laughs> sparkling red wine. That is that is South Australian in particular. Another episode of Wine 01. Again, Henry, Noah, Brendan. One day I'm going to forget the names because we've been drinking wine and it's going to be really amusing. <laughs> I'm going to be like, Henry. Bre- Brenry, Hoa. Brenry and Hoa. <laughs> Long hair and boss. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, until next week, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Catch Cheers, you then. guys.